I was actually pretty fortunate. I grew up playing elite level football as a young kid. However, as I kind of got older and I was always that small kind of short skinny guy when I went to college, I went into the gym and I made tons of mistakes when it came to not just my training, but also my diet and things like that. 11, nearly 12 years on from training and working with over 300 clients online through my business and working with people in person as well, I want to share kind of the five biggest mistakes that I've made and probably the most common ones that I see other people make as well. If you're a newbie lifter, then this is for you. If you're someone that's like just about to get into training or you're starting to restart training and you don't want to make mistakes, then this video is going to be super valuable to you. If you're new to this channel, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe as well, and make sure you stay until the end of this video because if you stay until the end of the video, I'm actually going to give you a free exclusive bonus for staying until the end. So let's dive straight into it. So number one, the first mistake that I made was actually following other people's routines. And I think this is quite a common thing as a newbie. If you ever go into the gym, you look at the big guy and you're like, what's he training? Why is he training like that? Maybe I should follow what he does. But this isn't actually the best way to do it. One of the experiences that I had was I was searching the internet and I went onto this website called simplyshredded.com. And on this website, they have all the biggest fitness models and fitness guys in the world. They have the whole breakdown of their diet and their training. And I used to follow this guy called Ulysses, right? Um, he has a fantastic physique. And I basically followed his diet as much as I could, meal for meal, and I followed his training. Now, the thing with this approach is maybe I'm not at the same starting point that he is. Maybe he is taking extra supplements that, you know, I'm not taking. Maybe he has a different body type to me, or maybe he's just got a completely different goal. What I'm trying to say here is that following someone's routine that's not personalized and that is just because they're in shape doesn't mean it's going to be effective for you, especially if you're a busy person and you have like specific goals, injuries to work around. Following something that's more customized is actually going to be a better solution. So I find that like a progressive training program that has simple kind of workouts tailored to my goals and my time is so much more important. And having this direction is actually going to be so much better when starting out. Just because someone's bigger doesn't mean that their program is going to be better for you and you shouldn't always follow their routine. You should always take advice and maybe follow routines of people that are in your position or that have very similar pain points to you or challenges to you. I think that that's so much better when it comes to following the routine than trying to follow a random person's that you know you see on the internet. And that was the first mistake that I made. The second mistake that I made was actually choosing the wrong goal. I think one of the big things that most guys wanna do is to get that chiseled, abs and that physique and as a young teen that was the first thing that I wanted and I just wanted to get these shredded abs which is you know a bit crazy because I was already lean at the time and I remember this time I went to Zanti right I think I was 17 18 I went on holiday and I was already in great shape but I was like eating tuna and protein shakes all the way up to it I had literally no muscle mass on my frame but I just kept following like this rigid strict calorie deficit diet and I was just like losing muscle and just getting leaner and when you're kind of starting out at the gym your potential to build muscle is actually so good, right? That your potential is amazing. So if you're in a lean starting point with little to no muscle, then it's probably a good idea that you focus on weight gain, right? And building muscle and getting stronger. That's a really good focus to put your time into because you can put on like 20 to 25 pounds of muscle within the first year. Now, on the flip side, if you're like overweight and you're holding a little bit extra body fat, then it's probably a good idea to kind of like cut and reduce your body fat down. But the most important thing is you picked a goal that is going to be relevant to you, relevant to your body type, and again, personalized to the approach that you need to take. I think that that one is really important. I also think that trying to get down to a lean starting point is really, really good before you bulk up like significantly. So if you're a beginner and you're overweight, get down to a lean body fat and then focus on bulking up. Do the opposite to kind of what I did because that's going to allow you then to bulk up, see your gains a lot better and stay lean in the process. Okay, the third mistake that I see people make, which is so common, is not having a structured training program. They kind of just go into the gym and they might be training hard, but like there's no framework behind this there's no clarity it's kind of like well i fancy legs and maybe a little bit of shoulders today i'm going to do that okay today's chest and arms day i'm going to follow that okay maybe i'll do you know a little bit of biceps today and a bit of abs right there's no real focus on sets on reps on rest periods anything like that it really is just kind of like doing whatever you feel like and i did this for ages i was like chopping and changing training programs right so i was trying this one week i saw a friend do this another week and it just meant that I didn't have any consistency. I wasn't making any progress on, you know, any one program or any specific lifts because I was chopping and I was changing all the time. And I was kind of just doing what I feel like. And, you know, I was actually neglecting body parts in the process. So I was training my chest like so much more. And I think that's why now I've got quite a predominant chest because 
I was training that all the time when I went in and I actually ended up injuring my shoulder in the process because I was overtraining it too much and I wasn't training my legs. So it was kind of like disproportionate. So, you know, the solution to this is to have one training program and stick to it. And, you know, and there's that famous quote, right, by Bruce Lee, where he says something like, I don't fear the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And I think that that is like a great concept to have for your training as well. The more you practice this program repeatedly, the better and more proficient you're going to get at the certain movements, which means you're going to get more gains and that's going to compound. So having a structured training program sticking to one for at least like six to 12 months is a really good strategy. Of course, a mistake number four that I made was training single muscle groups. Now, a bro split is something that probably most of us try, right? You know, we go into the gym and we're like, okay, today's chest day, today's shoulders and it's legs. Then we do abs and maybe something else and then we rest. The issue with this is there's strong research to show that training muscle groups two times a week is actually far more advantageous to muscle gain and strength than training it just once a week. Training it three times a week, there wasn't actually that much difference. So the actual sweet spot is to train your muscles two times per week. Now, the reason for this, the first one is due to muscle protein synthesis. And basically muscle protein synthesis needs to elevate, be elevated for, I think it's like 24 to um, 46 hours after you train. Essentially what that means is if you train chest on a Monday, then you wait another seven days for you, know, to, you to train that muscle group again there's that period towards like you know wednesday thursday and the end of the week where muscle protein synthesis isn't being elevated so to actually train muscles twice a week maybe on a monday and a thursday you're keeping that muscle protein synthesis elevated throughout the week what that is allowing you to do is actually build more muscle and strength which is really important the second thing is recovery right so training with a greater frequency allows you to recover from your sessions better so because you're probably going to be training a little bit less volume in these more frequent sessions this is actually going to allow you to recover quicker and train with more intensity right because you're reducing the volume and you can train with more intensity the next time you go in which is going to allow you to get stronger allow you to recover better and make those workouts far more intense so what is the solution to single muscle group training well i'd actually switch to a split that has muscles trained twice a week instead of maybe doing you know like a, a traditional bro split i would do something like push pull legs repeat if you're doing it six days a week you can also do upper body lower body rest and then upper body lower body again that is a fantastic split that a lot of my clients do then another one that you can do is upper body lower body rest and then do a, like a full body for three days a week those will work really well and those will all train two muscle groups in a week okay so mistake number five that i actually made was being an obsessive food tracker okay and this is a bit of a weird one because it's maybe an opposite to what a lot of people maybe experience and things like that and you know i was like super obsessed with food tracking and like i think like after i've been training for 12 months like i learned how food tracking will work and i just built the habit but i got overly obsessed with it and there's this one story of when i went to a barbecue i remember that like i was at a friend's barbecue over summer i was in really great shape but i was so obsessed with food tracking that i didn't want to eat like the burgers and the food on there because i couldn't track it right how much of a fucking loser was i there like why did i do that so you know i dieted down to a low body fat but because I was so obsessed with like food tracking and logging and making sure this happens, then I was just like, I need to keep doing it, right? And what this actually led to was me going on like weekend benches and going completely crazy because I was like so strict. So I'd go weeks and weeks with obsessively food tracking, being at these barbecues, not eating, and then I'd finally cave and then I'd just go crazy and end up binging, adding a lot of muscle, uh, a lot of fat, sorry, then having to do cardio to kind of like prevent myself from gaining all this stuff. And it was like this really like unhealthy and vicious cycle. So, you know, I think the solution to this is like definitely do food tracking to stay accountable. And if you're overweight and you've got a lot of body fat, then food tracking is probably going to be good for you. But what I'm trying to say here is don't go to the extreme whereby you're using it as an obsessive way to like monitor everything. Use it as a way to keep accountable. And then on certain days, maybe have a couple of days off a week where you don't track and you just eat intuitively. You eat a high protein diet and you focus on all the right foods without being super crazy. And this is going to lead to fewer binges. It's going to allow you to have way more balance within your life. Have dinners with your family, with kids, whatever it may be, your girlfriend. And yeah, it's going to make your life way more enjoyable. So those are the five mistakes that I made when it came to the gym and to training. Let me know in the comments below if you relate to any of these or if you've got any questions. And because you've stayed to the end, I've actually got a free copy of my professional's fitness travel guide, especially for you. So all you need to do is basically click the link in the description and in the comments and you can get a copy. You'll also join my newsletter with over 10,000 other high performers and entrepreneurs where you're going to get a really great insight into actionable ways to level up your health as a busy high performer, as well as exclusive discounts and other great rewards. So thank you for watching today's video. We will see you in the next one.